Welcome to Quincy Access Television's State Senate debate via Zoom. The uh, candidates for State Senate in the Norfolk and Plymouth District, incumbent Senator John Keenan and challenger Alex Mendez. I'm Mark Crosby of Quincy Access Television, the government coordinator here at QATV and the moderator for this debate, which is conducted now remotely as so many things are through Zoom. The format of this debate was, to, was decided upon earlier by the candidates. A coin flip determined the order of the candidates' responses. And during the program, the candidates will be questioned by our news panel. And our news panel is QATV's Joe Catalano and Patriot Ledger reporter Joseph DePazio. Scott Jackson of the Quincy Sun newspaper was unable to attend, but has provided questions that I will share on his behalf. I ask that each candidate be courteous and respectful, remaining mindful of the time limits, allowing for an informative and beneficial debate. A timekeeper will notify each candidate when their allotted time has expired. And please be advised candidates, in fairness to each of you, the time allotted will be strictly enforced. This will assure that both candidates will have equal time to state their positions. So we'll begin with a two minute opening statement from Mr. Mendez. Let me know when it's good. It's good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hello everyone. I'm Alex Mendez from Quincy and it's time to think big and get serious. I love my country, I love my city and I love our state. But like you, I'm tired of all the political nonsense that's holding us back and pulling us apart. So I'm running as an independent to pull us together. Politically, I'm not left, I'm not right. I move forward. And the best way to move forward is with large scale investments in science, infrastructure, and people. Just like the generations of Americans before us who did exactly that when they built this country. Americans like Roosevelt when he, with the Green New Deal generation when they built the Quabbin Reservoir where we still get our water from 100 years later. By, and also like Americans like Eisenhower in the greatest generation who built the high spaceships and homes that paved the way for us to become the greatest superpower in human history. Now I want us to use that same strategy to turn our state into the fastest growing economy in the world. More precisely, I want us to invest in science by growing our innovation sector and speeding up scientific advancement. I want us to invest in infrastructure by building a bullet train from Central Mass to Boston and accelerating our transportation and renewable energy systems. And I want to invest in First, by prioritizing people's physical, mental, and socioeconomic well-being with good health care and good jobs. And most of all, we need to invest in people by creating a, full, a free state college system that emphasizes STEM, the trades, and lifelong learning so we can build our future, grow our economy, and uplift us all. Because right now, the truth is, something is terribly wrong. And we've fallen down, and we've fallen behind. And what's worse is that we all see it and we all feel it in very scary ways. So right now, more than ever, it's time for hope and it's time for positive change. And I'm here to bring exactly that. I'm Alex Mendez and the time for thinking small is over. It's time to think big and get serious. And if you have the chance, please check out the website at MendezForSenate.com and on Instagram at, at MendezForSenate. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. You so now we'll hear from Senator Keenan. Good evening. It's great to be here. I want to thank QATV, the Patriot Ledger, the Quincy Sun, uh, for for hosting this uh, this evening. It's a great opportunity to to say hello to folks and to get our, our thoughts out there on uh, what's uh, pressing the, these days. Uh, you know, we find ourselves right now in the grip of a pandemic, and we are facing some of the most difficult financial times that we've faced in a long, long time. And uh, we have to recognize that there are people out there who are struggling to keep a roof over their heads, food on the table and to, to keep a job. Many have lost their jobs. Um, my office has received hundreds of calls over the last few months, and we've tried to uh, help as many people as we can. And I, and I just wanna take a moment to thank uh, my team, uh, Doreen, uh, Andrea, Abby, Morgan. They have just done a phenomenal job in helping the residents of Quincy, Braintree, Abington, Rockland, and Holbrook uh, through this pandemic. Uh, many people have had issues trying to get their unemployment claim uh, processed. They've had issues trying to, to find uh, food resources or to, to help with housing, rent payments, whatever the case may be. So we've tried as best we can to help them get through this pandemic. We still have a lot to work to do, 
Uh, while we're doing the local things, uh, helping people in the community, uh, on the state level, we have been active with, with different pieces of legislation, providing resources to our cities and towns for their health departments, for their public safety departments, uh, for the school departments, so that we can get children back to school. We've uh, worked with our social services agencies in Quincy, like Manit, Bay State, QCAP, those organizations, the Interfaith and others that give uh, so much help to people uh, and that are being called upon during this period of time to give even more. But again, there's a lot of work to do there. So over the next several months, we're gonna continue doing what we're doing, helping people connect with uh, state services, connect with the benefits that they need. And then we're also gonna continue to focus on moving the district and the Commonwealth forward. There's a lot of work to be done, but I'm hopeful we'll get through it and we'll come out on the other side a lot better. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Keenan. Now we turn to questions from our panel. The candidate uh, chosen to respond first will have one minute for a reply, followed by a one minute response from the other candidate, and finally a 15 second rebuttal. So to start the first round, we turn to Joe Catalano. Joe, you will ask the first question of Senator Keenan. Thanks, Mark. Good evening, Senator. Good evening. Question for you regarding uh, the pandemic. Would you support extending the moratorium on evictions uh, during this crisis that's set to expire uh, very soon? The governor has said he will let it expire and is leaving it up to the legislature to act. Would you support extending that moratorium? Yes, the, the moratorium is set to expire October 17th. There is a CDC moratorium in place that extends through the end of December, but it's not quite as comprehensive as what we've done here in Massachusetts. I would uh, support the extension. However, I think we have to look at finding a way to make sure that landlords uh, don't suffer during this process either. There are people who can't pay rent who are not paying rent uh, because they've lost their job or, or re uh, working reduced hours. Uh, landlords, uh, left uh, having to still pay property taxes and utilities and mortgages. So we have to make sure that whatever we do balances the interest of those tenants who are at risk with landlords. And I think we can find that balance. And uh, I, 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 so I do support extending it, yes. Thank you, Senator Keenan. Mr. Mendez, a 60 second response. Oh, of course, I think we'd have to extend it because at the rate we're going right now, we're at the rate of more people not being able to pay their bills. Luckily, I live at home with my folks taking care of my father who's getting real old, but times are getting unimaginably tough. So bills are getting higher and the people are just putting things off. I actually recently got unemployed, so I'm actually thinking about next month what bills I have to pay, whether I'm gonna eat or pay car insurance. And we get, um, it gets real tough. So of course we have to extend the moratorium, but what we also have to do is think big and get serious beyond uh, just are we going to how are we going to put band-aids on it we have to think bigger and say how can we actually get people back to work get our economy going safely and operating at almost as full of a capacity as we possibly can so we don't have to worry about the huge economic impacts that are going to happen from late rents people losing their jobs unemployment's expiring so we have to think big and get serious and yes to extend the moratorium but we have to do so much more and thank you mr mendez and thank you Senator Keenan, 15 seconds. Uh, we, we just got to focus on a lot of things. Uh, the other part of this equation is that the state is in pretty serious financial straits presently. So we're going to have to find a way to balance doing what we have to do and finding a way to do it. And a lot of that is going to depend on us getting federal stimulus money. Thank you, Senator Keenan. Joe DeFazio from the Patriot Ledger, a question for Mr. Mendez. How's it going, Mr. Mendez? Uh, the first question I have is, uh, I wrapped up a story for this weekend, uh, kind of taking a look at the burgeoning food insecurity on the South Shore. Um, the federal government doesn't offer uh, individual aid soon. What do you think a state fix could be to help meet that gap for folks who are going hungry? Uh, right now, we have to make sure that infrastructure systems for food, especially for indigenous people, are especially supported. Um, I'm trying to think of the Greater Boston Food Bank, that's the name of it. We have to make sure places like the Greater, uh, Greater Boston Food Bank are operating so that the lowest of the low have the ability to feed themselves and we can take care of them. But also, once again, we have to think big and get serious. So how else can we prepare for the not just the next month, six months? We have to start thinking about this because the economic impact of this is going to be so enormous. 
that so many more people are going to be actually worried about resources and paying for food and keeping the lights on. So think big and get serious. So we have to get our economy going by investing in science, infrastructure, and people, get as many people as we can to work so that food security isn't an issue because it was an issue where all this happened, which is why we had systems like the Greater Boston Food Bank, but we also need to make it so that we're getting rid of poverty and people can always food feed themselves and not just at a time of uh, global pandemic. So we need to take food seriously. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. Senator Keenan, a 60 second response. Sure, uh, thank you. Uh, the legislature, me and my colleagues, we went to work on fun providing funding for some of our food banks, uh, not only the Greater Boston Food Bank, but food banks throughout the South Shore and throughout the legislative district. I was in pretty regular communication with them and working to, to get a sense of what the demand was. And what I was hearing and seeing was that the demand was great. So that prompted us in the legislature, those in particular that came from areas that were particularly hard hit to, to advocate on behalf of additional funding. That funding was passed in the supplemental budget. We are in the process now of preparing the fiscal 2021 budget and uh, funding for those social service agencies for those food banks will be critical. And uh, we'll continue to push for that, get that money out. And then also we call upon those who are doing better. There are people who are, are getting through these tough times in better shape than others. And then the call to them would be to, to, to help your neighbors, to, to um, volunteer and to contribute to your local food bank. That'll be critical as well. Thank you, Senator Keenan. Mr. Mendez, 15 seconds. As John mentioned, the demand is going higher and the areas that are hardest hit have been hardest hit in area, areas before, like in Roxbury for the Greater uh, Boston Food Bank. So we need to actually not just worry about the next one month, two months. So a bill to get some more food there isn't what we need because those impoverished areas had issues before this. So we have to think big, get serious and provide jobs and stability so people can feed themselves. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. Now a question from Scott Jackson, which will be delivered by me to Senator Keenan. How should the state address the MBTA's budget deficit? Is cutting services on certain routes, as has been proposed by T officials, the answer? Uh, there's no clear cut answer right now. Uh, we, the MBTA has undertaken an effort to look at all the routes throughout uh, the system. For instance, here in Quincy, uh, the 214-216 bus uh, is slated to see a change in its roots. And we've been working with the MBTA over the last week and a half to make sure that even if there is a change in that route, those routes, that there still is the ability of people, for instance, who live in O'Brien Towers to get the bus to take them as close to stop and shop as it does now. Uh, that's important. The same thing, uh, there's a bus route through the heart of Braintree that we're looking at and working with the MBTA on. So all of those things are going to have to be examined. We're looking at reductions of service in Keolis, the commuter rail on all our lines, orange, green, blue, and red line. They're talking about a 10 minute headway for the red line. And I think as long as that can be done reliably, that may be a solution, but we also have to make sure that there's uh, not overcrowding on those trains given the situation that we're in. So all of it's gonna have to come into play. And uh, we're in regular contact with the MBTA on that and continue to work with the residents of the district. Thank you, Senator Keenan, Mr. Mendez, uh, 60 seconds. Awesome. Thank you so much. We have to look even further beyond just the MBTA. The MBTA is almost a 60 year old system that's already outdated and falling apart. John likes to be happy with buying a few trains from China. China has laid 15,000 miles of high speed rail in the past few years. In the US, we have almost nothing. So what we need to do is think big and get serious beyond fixing the MBTA and small band-aid projects like John has proposed. We need to build a bullet train to central mass to alleviate all the congestion and traffic that's causing CO2 emissions to go up and wasting our time. We need to think big and get serious by building a bullet train to central mass and then we also need to fix the issue of the MBTA, but that's best solved with big solutions by working to expand the infrastructure of our entire state to decongest greater Boston, lower the cost of living, shorten commutes, and make life all around better for everyone. Because right now we have the best opportunity to evoke a positive change beyond just the small thinking projects of MBTA. Time to think big and get serious. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. Senator Keenan, 15 seconds. Yes, just quickly, we have an $18 billion capital improvement plan that's in place now for all uh, transportation uh, infrastructure needs. It's not enough. Mr. Mendez's plan would cost by his own estimates 30 to $40 billion. We just don't have that kind of money. 
uh, and the federal government doesn't have that kind of money. So we've got to solve our problems locally and then move out to look at it more comprehensively. Thank which you. We to. Thank you, Senator Keenan. Uh, the second round now of questions. Uh, we begin with Joe Catalano. And uh, Joe will ask uh, the question of Mr. Mendez. Thanks, Mark. Mr. Mendez, do you feel that the estate's Civil Service Commission exams and policies should be changed uh, to encourage more minorities to seek state and municipal jobs. What we need to do is expand the quality of opportunity. You may have a meritocracy system where the hardest working people and most qualified can get those positions. But we need to expand to equal opportunity. And that's making sure that public education systems from K all the way to college are taken care for so that people have the best opportunity to do the best on the job, indiscriminate of whether it's minority or not. The more reflective our uh, civil service um, community is, whether it's police, fire, every on any civil servant, the more reflective it, of it is of our own community, the better it's going to be. So I want to uplift our entire community so that we can all have an equal opportunity to do the best we can and provide and protect our city, protect our states, and make this country awesome and keep everyone safe. And I don't care if someone black, white, Asian, Mexican, I want the best people and I want them to have the best opportunity to make sure that they can contribute to our society the best they can. And that's what all America is all about. And that's what I love. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. Senator Keenan, 60, 60 seconds. Yes, thanks for the question, Joe. Yes, we should look at our civil service system. Uh, when you look at many of our communities, the workforce does not reflect the population of those communities. In many of our communities, not all, but many are civil service communities. So we should look at restructuring uh, the civil service exam process to make sure that we get uh, workforces within our communities that are reflective. Um, there is the ability to call for certain lists. You can call, for instance, for uh, a, a list of, of minor, a certain minority group and call for that list and hire off that list. We've got to encourage municipalities to take a better look at that and see if that's something that may work to uh, increase diversity within their workforces. And we're not talking about a, a, a workforce that targets this group or targets that group. We're looking at a workforce that is reflective of the community and civil service should be examined to make sure that that is an avenue that can be used to make sure that uh, the workforce is reflective. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Mendez, you have 15 seconds. Like I said, anything we can do to increase opportunity and equalize opportunity is a great step for our country. I want the hardest working people to uh, get the best benefits, and that's what America is all about. So put in equal opportunity and work your butt off. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. Joe DeFazio, a question for Senator Keenan. Thank you. Uh, earlier this year, both houses of the legislature passed their own version of a police reform bill. That, those bills are currently in conference committee. Senator Keenan, what do you hope to see come out of that conference committee? And Mr. When it, to Mr. Mendez, did you support either of those bills? And what do you want to see come out of conference committee? Uh, Senator. Thank you. I supported the bill that uh, came to the Senate, and I supported it for the following reasons, and this is what I hope to see come out of the conference committee. I hope to see a standardized hiring process. Um, by standardized, I mean statewide, so that every department has the ability to hire qualified uh, employees in the same way. I want to see standardized academy training uh, across the Commonwealth. I want to see standardized uh, in-service education training. Right now, there's about 30 communities in Massachusetts that don't meet the 40 hour requirement. There's about nine that don't provide any in-service training. So I think it's important that we have standardized in-service training. I wanna see a, a post committee, a committee that uh, certifies or decertifies offices and makes sure that there's a registry of offices who have been decertified. I want to see a pattern practice put in place. It's used by the federal government to basically keep track of police departments. So those are the things that, that I wanna see and I, I think that uh, that will come out of the committee. And if it does, then I will support it again. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Mendez, a response. Thank you, that's a great question. I wish we had more than 60 seconds to go over it. John, I invite you to a one-on-one -on -one debate anytime you want so we can go into the need of uh, expanding the dialogue on these issues. But one, there is an enormous need for criminal justice reform. When I started school back in 2006, the highest prison population in the world was my biggest focus because it targeted disparately people, people of color. 
But this police bill, it's, it was rushed and too symbolic to actually do anything. Black Lives Matter, it doesn't address any systemic problems. It's only words that they use to pander and make things sound good as if they're doing reform. For example, restrictions on tear gas for when there's so many riots of all the police brutality. And also the bill was rushed overnight and showed how quickly our legislature was ready to turn its back on people who protect us day and night and care for us 24 seven. And what happened was they rushed a bill and it just was, it was too short, too little, and does nothing and show that our legislature can't handle the real problems, like we need more time to discuss, which I wish we could have. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mendez. Uh, Senator Keenan, 15 seconds. Sure. So here's a difference. You know where I stand on issues. Uh, I support police reform. I'll continue to support police reform uh, as long as it is balanced and fair. And that's going to be the goal of, of my efforts over the next several months as we continue to look at this issue. Uh, but you always know where I stand. You may not agree with me, but you'll know where I stand. Thank you, Senator. And uh, now a question from Scott Jackson, which I will once again deliver. And this is a question for Mr. Mendez. Mr. Mendez, is the state doing enough to address climate change? What would you do differently? As a state, we can only do so much, but we have a fantastic opportunity in Massachusetts with, with our leading biomedical and technology centers where we can come up with the breakthrough technologies to make this world even better and capitalize those on a state level. That's why I say we need to invest in science, infrastructure, and people. What we need to do is I want us to build a bullet train from Boston to Central Mass that will expand our infrastructure and allow us a great opportunity for us to accelerate our transition to renewable energy here in the state. So we cannot just be a leader. The best we can do is lower CO2 emissions, but we need to be able to show ourselves as a global leader in reducing CO2 emissions. So we're not doing enough. We need to get a bullet train, reduce traffic, and accelerate as fast as we can. We also have to shore up our coastlines. For example, John's going to say that he spent I don't know, $2.5 billion on a bill, that's only 10% of what we spend on healthcare. It's not enough by the numbers. So I think we can make a bigger investment, especially with the help of some federal agencies and federal money, because it's time to think big and get serious with investments in science, infrastructure, and people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. Senator Keenan. Uh, thank you. So in the Senate, we passed the Next Generation uh, Climate Policy Act, and it does a few things. One, it, it the goal of that is to make us uh, net neutral carbon emissions wise by 2050. And it establishes benchmarks that each five year, after each five year period, uh, we will have target where we're supposed to be. And for the first time we'll measure that. So every five years there'll be a target with ultimately the goal being that we will be net neutral by 2050. And there are also some subcategories within that bill where we focus on transportation, where we focus on buildings, for instance, stretch energy code and things of that nature. We're also looking with uh, working with the MBTA to make sure that their fleet is net neutral zero uh, emissions by 2040. There's a process there, and that may not be soon enough, but there's a process there so that the aging fleet can be replaced. And by 2024, the goal is to have all state vehicles net neutral, uh, zero emissions, basically. Um, so we're on target to do, to do those types of things. We're aggressive. Uh, I think we can be even more aggressive, and I'm hopeful that we'll, Thank we'll you. continue to do so. Thank you, Senator Keenan. Mr. Mendez, 15 seconds. No, fantastic. I wish we had more time. But this, what John has failed to do is put forth a strategy. Our legislature can set all the benchmarks at once, but what we need is state, federal, and private institutions to get together to build an actual actionable strategy like I present at MendezForSenate.com of building our infrastructure to accelerate our transition to renewable energies and lower CO2 emissions. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. Uh, now we enter the uh, third round, and we begin once again with Joe Catalano, and he will pose a question to Senator Keenan. Thanks, Mark. Senator, given the two uh, emergency uh, shutdowns recently at the natural gas compressor station uh, in North Weymouth, do you plan to take any action in the Senate to make changes to the way those facilities are approved and regulated? <clears throat> uh, thank you. Uh, those facilities are approved and regulated at this stage at the federal level. As it, as it made its way through some of the preliminary stages, there was the opportunity for some state action. And the, that action let rest with the executive branch and they failed to take that action. I joined with the, the mayors of Weymouth, Braintree and Quincy, the entire legislative delegation for those communities, Congressman Lynch, Senators Warren and Senator Markey to his one voice uh, oppose the, the station. Um, but um, it just, 
it's at the federal level now and they seem not to listen. I was down there just this past Saturday with the FRAX group, a group that is doing incredible work uh, to protest against this, but to educate people in the communities as well. Um, it's the wrong plant in the wrong location at the wrong time. And we're gonna to continue to do whatever we can, but at this stage, the oversight and the licensing and uh, whether it, it opens or it or doesn't rest with the federal government, but we'll continue to work with our federal partners. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Mendez, a response. Well, it's terrible what's happening with the compressor station. This was one of the issues that was brought up in 2016 when I first started running. John didn't really pay attention to it until he went to a meeting. So thank you, Frax, for raising awareness to our legislatures. You don't have to raise awareness with me. I know the issue. John, over the past few years, has been impotent over the issue and actually stopping. If he could do something, he could have done something to stop it, but he's done nothing. So I wouldn't put our trust in him. Right now, we need a visionary and a bulldog, and I'm both those things. If you want someone to help get that compressor down, I'm your guy. I will bite and get loud. That's what I do, all right? So I would love to work with FRAX, any legislatures like Mark and Ward, to actually be a positive voice in our district to make sure that fumes aren't poisoning our generation, the next generation of Americans, especially in Quincy and the South Shore. So we need to think big and get serious, and not just worry about shutting down a compressor station, but extending our renewable energy infrastructure. But like I said, we can do so much better because John showed that he hasn't been able to do too, too, too much because it's in operation and they're blowing clouds of smoke. If he could have done something, he would have. But it's time to think big and get serious. Thank you, Mr. Mendez, thank you. Senator, 15 seconds. We'll continue our efforts. And Alex, anytime you wanna join us at the bridge, anytime you wanna join us at the compressor station, it's been four years, we haven't seen you there. We'd love to see you there. Another voice would be really helpful. Thank you, Senator. Joe DeFazio, once again, of the Patriot Ledger, a question this time for Mr. Mendez. Thanks very much. Uh, Mr. Mendez, uh, coronavirus has touched all of our lives in different ways, some more substantially than others. What do we need to do as a state to prepare for the winter when this virus could get worse and the economic fallout, which could be with the state for who knows how long? Thank you. No, that's a fantastic question. At first, to accept John's opportunity, I'd love it if we could actually put a microphone between us. I'd love that opportunity, but you've refused all opportunities for real conversation. Right now, we have a fantastic opportunity to take on the challenge before us. We need to think big and get serious. You mentioned the impact of COVID. Right now, I'm looking 30 to 50 years down the road. We need to worry about COVID and opening up our economy and getting restaurants, everyone to back to work as soon as we can with the best science and best safety precautions. But we need to look bigger than what are we gonna do in the next two months? We have to look to say, how are we gonna invest in infrastructure and science to make sure that we're prepared for the next big disease and pandemics that are on the forefront of coming. They're gonna have higher death rates, more contagious, and are gonna be, make this look like a cakewalk. So this is a great practice and it's very serious. So we need to get people involved and um, we'll keep going from here, but we need to work to open up, uh, for the short term, open us up so we can get our economy going safely. But we also have to think 30 to 50 years down the road to be prepared for anything that nature has to Thank do. you, Mr. Mendez. Senator Keenan, 60 seconds. Yes, what we're hearing from our Department of Public Health is very similar to what we're hearing from the federal government, that this could be a very difficult period. So what we have to do at the state level, we have to encourage people to get flu shots. That is absolutely critical. We have to encourage people to keep wearing their mask. That is critical. And we have to get our hospitals ready for a likely surge uh, based on or as a result of the combination of seasonal flu in COVID. We've seen over the course of the past several weeks that uh, cases have increased, number of deaths have been increasing, not to an alarming number, but to a number that we really have to pay attention to. We do see a few of our hospitals already in a surge situation. So we have to make sure that they're ready for the combination of the flu and COVID. And we have to make sure that our, our local public health departments have the resources that they need to prepare for this and to help uh, local businesses get open safely so that we can find the right balance between an active economy and warding off the impact of the seasonal flu and the, that with the combination of COVID. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Mendez, 15 seconds. 
Uh, like I said, we need to think big and get serious. Uh, John didn't actually, he just put out some words that anyone could have said that's pretty standard on any website. What we need to do is think big and get serious and prepared, not just for now. We need to invest in science, infrastructure, and people to make sure that we're prepared. John has the tendency of always looking to where the ball is, and that's why we're always behind. He never looks to where Thank the you. Ball is. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. Uh, now, once again, a question from uh, Scott Jackson, which I will deliver to Senator Keenan. Massachusetts voters approved adult use cannabis sales in a 2016 referendum. How would you rate the state's regulation of that industry to date? Uh, it has not been great. It took too long for those to get open. It's, it's no secret that, that I have some concerns about the adult use cannabis industry. Um, I, my main concern is with the industry is that it doesn't target young people. What adults do whether they want to use cannabis, whether they want to have access to it from a, a recreational dispensary, that's fine at this stage. I just want to make sure that children are not targeted. Um, the state can do a better job, quite frankly, in making sure that advertising is, is properly regulated, uh, making sure that that's the uh, process of going in and, and purchasing is regulated so that it's not available to young people. So those are the types of things that, that I want to see. And I think the state can do a better job. The state was very slow in rolling it out. There's a lot of frustration, and I think that we have to acknowledge that. But we also have to make sure, and this is important, that big industry doesn't come in and take over this, and that we have a situation where profits drive this, and they look at young children as a profit source. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Mendez, 60 seconds. The cannabis industry is an industry like any other. We need to think big and get serious. John has always had problems with it at every stage. He thinks people should get arrested for pot since day one. I don't understand. No. Right now, the criminal justice system is, cannabis is one of the biggest entries into the criminal justice system. So that's my main focus, the criminal and racial justice aspect of our drug laws. The ACL says legalize it um, and all the prison industry, I mean, all uh, prison reform policies say that we should have better cannabis policies. I've been to all of our uh, cannabis stores. They seem very well regulated. The staffs are fantastic people, friendly. They have the highest precautions. My biggest problem is that the taxes are too high and it causes people not to um, was invest in our state. So if they lower the taxes, that would maybe make it more economically feasible for people so they're not going to the black market as they are now, but they've been operating perfectly fine. Uh, the issue of targeting towards children is just something John's putting towards fear mongering. I love an actual debate, John, on debate uh, cannabis. You refuse it every time, but uh, the invitation's always open. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. 15 seconds, Senator Keenan. Sure, you know, the, the industry pushed this with the idea that there'd be tax revenue now the industry says lower the tax rate. It costs money to regulate the industry. And we do have to make sure that there's not a black market. The black market now is worse than it ever was. Uh, and so we have to make sure that we, we properly address that as well. Thank you, Senator. We're beginning now our fourth and final round. We start uh, as we start all rounds with Joe Catalano and Joe will ask a question of Mr. Mendez. Mr. Mendez, the uh, state, as you might be aware, suspended the MCAS exam requirements for public school students this year uh, due to the pandemic. So do you feel that the MCAS is a fair way to assess the academic achievements of students? And should those exams be suspended next year, changed or eliminated entirely? This is a question to me? It is. Yes, Mr. Mendez. Uh, the MCAS, is, it's, a, it's a problem. The best part about the MCAS well, not best, is that it allows when you do well, you get to go to the free college. Free college should be our uh, main priority. And we should have free college to anyone who wants to get in. Um, MCAS scores are a determinant of school capacity. We shouldn't be judging the ability of the school by forcing tests on students. Standardized tests aren't the best measurement of education because we need to think big and get serious to make sure that people have the opportunity to learn and do whatever they want. That's why on my website, I have uh, opportunities that we need to stress STEM, um, uh, the trades and lifelong learning because education is so important that we shouldn't just be reducing a kid to an MCAS score number. We need to improve our education with lots of funding at the federal and state level to make sure that all of our schools from the poorest neighborhoods to the richest neighborhoods have equal opportunity and the best access. And what's fantastic is technology allows us to do all this at a lower cost and I love it and it's time to think big, get serious, more at MendezPresenta.com and I would love to talk about education some more. Thanks, Mr. Mendez. Uh, Senator Keenan, 60 seconds. 
Thank you. Yes, I think uh, postponing the MCAS was appropriate. I think it's appropriate going forward during the course of the pandemic. I think it's a great opportunity to take a step back and reevaluate whether uh, MCAS uh, should continue to play the role that it does. I do believe that you need some sort of standard by which to measure students, but there's been an overemphasis on testing, quite frankly. And I think the key to education is making sure that every child has equal access to an education of equal quality. In the legislature, we worked very hard, the House and the Senate, and we passed the Student Opportunity Act, which will make sure that funding is equal throughout every community in the Commonwealth so that every student does have equal opportunity to an education uh, of equal quality. It was a, a, a uh, landmark piece of legislation, the most comprehensive piece of education reform we've done since 1993. It would mean more money for our communities, uh, which to me is an investment in our future, investment in young people, and uh, that's something that should always be a focus of ours. Thank you, Senator. 15 seconds, Mr. Mendez. We need to worry, well, not worry. We always need to be cautious about uh, words that John uses, like landmark and comprehensive, because like he said, that's how we got MCAS in the first place. So if we have issues with that, we have to worry about words disguised, as bad policies disguised as good words. So it's time to think big, get serious, and have it so that we reform our education to improve uh, opportunity for the best uh, education. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. We turn now to the Patriot Ledger's Joe DeFazio, a question for Senator Keenan. Thank you. Um, if elected or reelected, uh, outside of coronavirus, what would be your chief legislative goal in the next session? Um, we have several. Uh, one would continue to, to do our work on the opioid epidemic. We've made great progress on that. I know Mr. Mendez is going to disagree, but we have passed uh, legislation in the Commonwealth um, that I have been actively involved with, have been the drafter of many of these bills that have moved Massachusetts ahead of most every other state. We passed, for instance, Chapter 55, a le legislation that I wrote that is considered a national model. The Mass Medical Society touts it as changing the way that we are attacking the opioid epidemic. Um, and it's, it's just considered a, a national model. We're gonna to continue to do that work. We're gonna to continue to work on helping people with disabilities, intellectual, emotional, and physical disabilities. That's always been a priority. Uh, making sure that we do as much as we can to fund the Student Opportunity Act will be a key priority. Um, so there, uh, and, and then beyond all that, uh, I represent a district and I will do everything as I have over the course of the past several years to make sure that the districts get the funding they need for public safety, for police, for fire, for education, for libraries, for veterans, all those types of things. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Mendez, your response. That's fantastic, but it's still thinking too small and doing nothing. Drug overdose rates have tripled since John's been in office. That's his biggest priority. He's expressed no vision right there, no vision of what he's going to do. Things that he did in the past, the answer was, what are you gonna do? I wanna spread my biggest vision of investing in science, infrastructure, and people that you've seen on MendezForSenate.com. And I wanna bring honesty to the legislature, not all these overnight sessions. And my biggest actual priorities are going to be getting a bullet train to Massachusetts that's going to create jobs and reduce traffic and fix a lot of problems and to transition to a free state college system because of, and that emphasizes STEM and online learning because imagine how good we could be if for the past six months we had a free education system where everyone unemployed in Massachusetts could learn and get skills so when they come out in the next nine months when they've been sitting at home unemployed, we can come out better and stronger. It's time to think big and get serious. John has expressed no vision, so it's time to think big and put bold ideas forward that I'm going to do in the Senate because I want to lift up all of us with broad. Thank opinion. you, Mr. Mendez. Senator Keenan, 15 seconds. We'll continue to do the work that we've been doing and continue to move the debate on a lot of these and to continue to pass pieces of legislation that truly are national models. Uh, we'll continue to do that. I'll continue to fight for funding for the towns that I represent and the city that I represent. Thank you, Senator. And now a question from Scott Jackson. This will be directed to Mr. Mendez. Should universal mail-in voting be extended to future elections, including municipal ones, regardless of the pandemic? Uh, we have to do so much reform to our voting process. I mentioned this earlier that we're still doing an antiquated system that's based on Athens when they had different color stones of going there and showing up and casting for this one or that. We have technology that we should be utilizing. Just in the 
I like the idea of expanding more than just one day of voting. We should expand it for weeks at a time so that people have enough time to find out who's on the ballot and get their voices heard. And so we're dealing with mail system that's hundreds of years old. We need to update even more than that. So to answer the question, yes, the more open and embraceive our election systems are, the absolute better. That's why I support question two, where we'll get on to later, I'm sure. We need to think big and get serious, not just worry about mailing ballots, but if we can register online um, for cars and all sorts of things, we can expand our infrastructure to improve democracy, to get more people voting from their phones, from any way possible, because those are some of the safest ways we can do it. Right now. I think it would be a fantastic opportunity. I look forward to all those changes. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. Yeah. Senator Keenan. Uh, yes, we should. We should extend the things that we've done for the pandemic in terms of, of ballot access uh, beyond the pandemic. I'm in regular communication with the clerks uh, in the in the district. Um, they have some challenges. We're moving things pretty quickly, but uh, in the primary election, they all did a great job, and they're all open to change, which is fantastic. So we should extend early voting. We should make that permanent in both uh, primary and final elections, municipal, state, and federal elections. That should be a priority. We should allow for mailing voting voting at municipal, state, and federal elections. That should be a priority. We should uh, improve uh, our registration process so that people have uh, a better ability to, to get registered. That is critical. We should make sure the same day voting is still an option for people, that it's safe, and that it's accessible. So we should do all of those things to ensure greater access uh, to voting for as many people as possible. And we'll continue our work in the legislature. We've taken great steps in a short period of time we can take even bigger steps over the course of the next several months in the course of the next several years. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Mendez, 15 seconds. What we need to do is not just worry about voting. We have to get people involved in, as candidates. There are only seven people running in Massachusetts out of the 40. We need long form debates. John refuses to have an actual debate and talk to me. These are wrong systems. So if we're worried about improving voting, we need to get more transparent and accountable legislatures. And I would look forward to love doing that. Thank you, so Mr. Thank Mendez. You so Thank you. Candidates uh, will now have one minute for closing remarks. And uh, once again, just to remind everybody, the order is determined, uh, was determined by a coin toss in the studio just prior to the beginning of this debate. Mr. Keenan, Senator Keenan, we will begin with you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity this evening. This, this, this has been great. Um, I want to thank the residents of, of Quincy and Abington, Braintree, Holbrook, and Rockland uh, for the honor of, of representing them in the Massachusetts State Senate. I respectfully ask the, for their vote in the upcoming election. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got to get through this pandemic, put the state on sound financial footing, and then move the Commonwealth forward so that it becomes, uh, again, the shining city on a hill, the shining Commonwealth uh, for all to follow. We've done it through some creative, uh, thoughtful um, approaches, and we'll continue to do that. And when all is said and done, Massachusetts will lead the nation as it always has. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Mendez, your closing remarks. I look forward to becoming our state senator so that we can truly lead the nation, not with small projects, but with big projects like investing in science, infrastructure, and people to uplift all of us. John has put out no ideas in the past 10 years. He hasn't even put up a vision, even now at Keener for Senate. We need to go to mendezforsenate.com so we can think big and get serious because the time of positive change is now. And I look forward to growing our economy and uplifting everyone because that's what we need, bold change. I asked John to debate, he refused to actually talk to me. He's devoid of ideas and we can do so much better. His track record, nothing. Overdoses have tripled since he's been in office and that's his biggest issue. I wanna build a bullet train and make education free for everyone in our state for the rest of their lives. Those are big thinking ideas. Those are gonna grow our economy. Those are gonna create hope and make life better for all of us. That's gonna make our past forefathers so proud of us beyond just thinking small with band-aids. It's time to think big and get serious. And I absolutely love my city, my country and everything. And thank you guys so much for this fantastic opportunity. I look forward to it. And John, let's have a real debate. I invite you. Thank you, Mr. Mendez. Uh, thank minutes. you. Thank you, guys. And as we close, as we close, our sincere thanks really to the candidates, uh, our panelists, the production team here at Quincy Access Television, and thank you for watching. Remember to vote in the upcoming presidential election on Tuesday, November 3rd. Your vote does count, and vote for the candidate who best represents your views. I'm Mark yes, Crosby at Quincy vote. Access Television. Please continue to watch QA TV for more locally produced programming. John, let's debate.